arranged marriage. We might completely be opposed to it in real life, but in romance books, specifically, they tend to be mafia related. Let's let's face it. It is it's chef's kiss. It has become a beloved trope of mine since reading romance because I just absolutely love mafia and like I said, it tends to be in mafia. That is what we're talking about. But first, let's go ahead and say hi. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new here. My name is Jen. This is Bookmark by Jen. And well, you know what? Let's just get right into it because I really want to talk about arranged marriage today. Let's go. The first book I'm bringing you today is Luca Vitiello by Cora Riley. Now, this is the follow up to her first book in the Born in Blood series, and it is Bound by Honor. So, Bound by Honor is, like I said, the first book. Now, it is the only book in the Bound by Honor series that is not dual POV. So we don't get Luca's point of view in this book. And it is an amazing book. Arya's point of view is just, it's amazing. But we were missing something, especially when you start reading the other books and you realize that you're getting that male point of view. You missed Luca. And Luca is very prominent in the series anyway. He is our capo. So to get Luca's point of view is, I mean, honestly, I feel like it was paramount. Like it did this book justice. That being said, Luca Vitiello, the book, um, his point of view is bound by honor, but in his point of view. So a lot of the information that you're getting is the same, but there are certain aspects of his life um, when he's not with Arya or before he is arranged to Arya that you didn't get in Bound by Honor and you get in this book. And I thought it was like that's what I was missing from Bound by Honor because you get more of a backstory of Luca. You get more of a backstory of why he is the way that he is and who his father really was because you get tidbits of what a horrendous man his father and, and Mateo's father is and to, to see that and to see how Luca is with Arya um, it just makes it that much more special because the man that he is or the man that he becomes with Arya um, and, and that he allows himself to be with her makes it that much more special. So of course I recommend reading all of the Bound by Honor series. I don't think that I've actually gotten through all of it yet but I definitely knew that I wanted to come back to Luca's point of view at some point and I thought it was a perfect way to start out this trope recommendation video. I definitely recommend reading this. Of course you're going to want to read Bound by Honor first and then read uh, Luca's point of view if you will and you can continue on or do something like what I did where I read a bunch of the books and then I just went back to Luca at some point um, and just getting back into that world was just scrumptious. So definitely recommend if you like mafia, if you like arranged marriage, there you go. My next book is The Reluctant Bride by Monica Murphy. This it follows Perry and Charlotte. What I thought was pretty refreshing is like most arranged marriages, or books of arranged marriage. It is typically set within the mafia world. This doesn't seem to have mafia ties. Um, I'll explain that in just a moment. This essentially is an arranged marriage between two very affluent families in New York that feel coming together will make them more affluent. Um, okay, so now I said it doesn't seem to have mafia ties, and that is because I am not going to lie here. I got pretty far through this book maybe in the 80 plus percentage that I realized this was not like a standalone or of an interconnected series. It is, I think like a trilogy um, because I was like, I'm really getting far into this book. And so why aren't, why aren't they married yet? Like when are they going to get married? What's going on? Um, that didn't take away from the story. I'm not saying that I just, I didn't realize. So when I was wondering why they weren't getting married, I quickly found out that is why. So we have Perry and we have Charlotte. Perry is what, like he's a little bit of a mama's boy, not in like that type of mama's boy. It's just basically he does whatever his mom wants. He has a couple brothers. They do what they want to do, but he feels like to keep the peace in the family, maybe it's better if I just go along with what my mother wants. And mommy wants me to get married to this person, which is Charlotte. She is from an extremely affluent family, a little bit more so than Perry's family, and two families coming together will apparently make complete magic. Now, there is a, a little bit of heat between them when they first meet. There is definitely an attraction. Even though they don't necessarily want to be married to each other, they both reconcile that it, it may be for the best because we can get kind of 
out from under the thumb of our families maybe now this is a bit of a slow burn but that i feel like is due to the fact that there are three <laughs> three books in the series that i didn't i didn't realize but you do get to see the development of the relationship and i thought that was refreshing i enjoyed being able to see them grow their relationship grow and it wasn't forced it wasn't an insta love it wasn't um like quick we have to finish up a book because there are other books that we get to really dig deep into their relationship i really like that perry is protective of charlotte even from the start even when he's not so sure what's going on but once their relationship does blossom and they kind of give in to their wants and their needs and their desires and their lust for one another and their what ifs um something happens and then you're left kind of on a cliffhanger so i will tell you that go into this knowing that you're probably going to want to read a little bit more because there is a bit of a cliffhanger so but otherwise i definitely recommend this i will continue on if you're looking for a little bit of a slow burn i don't know how the other two books pan out so you might get a little bit more spice in those but there is also an element of suspense and a little bit of a mystery as well so if you're in the mood for that and you are willing to read a couple books or a few then this is the trilogy for you okay i feel like as we go on they just keep getting better and better and better Next up, I have The Kiss Thief by LJ Shen. We are back in the mafia world, and I have to say very quickly, so LJ Shen, I really enjoy her writing. I have enjoyed so many of her books. I think that she does bully so well. She writes bully very, very well. There is a little bit of bully-esque. Yeah, Wolf is a bit of a bully. There's, yeah, she writes it really well, but I just, I, I love her storyline. I love the story development. She's one of those authors that can really quickly pull you in and you're just immersed in her world. And that was The Kiss Thief. So we've got, like I said, Mafia. We're set in Chicago. We are dealing with Francesca and Wolf, which I love that name, by the way. Like, and he is a bit of a wolf. So Francesca has lived a truly, truly sheltered life by her parents. She is promise to Angelo, whom she thinks she is absolutely in love with. She's been in love with him since she was a child. He's, I believe, like four years older than her, and she just cannot wait for that first kiss and to be with Angelo forever and ever. But Wolf has some other plans, and he's a sneaky little son of a bitch, and he steals her first kiss, which basically ensures that Francesca is going to marry him. Now, LJ Shun does a great job of creating this just delicious and gorgeous heat between Francesca and Wolf. It's a back and forth, one step forward, three steps back in some instances, and it's just really yummy goodness. I absolutely loved this journey. So Wolf doesn't trust very well. There's a reason, you will find that out, but he he has a hard time trusting. And so even if he gives an inch to Francesca, he's always in the back of his mind waiting for that other shoe to drop, wondering what is what's happening. Is there somebody scheming? Is is she scheming? What is she scheming? She can't possibly feel these feelings for me and I don't know if I trust what I'm feeling either it might just be lust like what is going on and why does he pursue her the way that he does and there's like a bit of game playing which I don't always like but it just fit so well so here we have that that back and forth that push and pull and like he just doesn't know what he wants to do but damn it he can't not be around her and it's like he keeps coming back for more to see, like, I'm going to push you to see how far I can take you, like, how much I can trust you to, because I'm never going to give you my heart, but, like, you know, he going he gonna to give that heart up at one point. But Francesca is really smart. She is, she's just, she's very naive, but I appreciated her smarts. I appreciated that she learned very quickly and very quickly on her feet and when they come together like the spice y'all 
the spice was there and their first encounter. Whoo, I saw that coming. I was like, yes, I loved it. It was, it was all around a really good time. Like I really, I just really enjoyed this. And if you haven't read anything by L.J. Shen, or if you're looking for an arranged marriage, if you're looking for this just really fun time, this is the book for you. Um, like I said, she does bully really well. I read so many books with bully in it, and I think that, like, I learned to love bully because of Elvation. The kiss feet, y'all. Like, you can thank me later. Ooh, y'all. Okay, so I got... I got a good one for you. So this is The Devil I Don't Know. This is by L.K. Shaw. This is my first read by this author. It definitely will not be the last. I believe, I think, that this is the first book in the Interconnection series. We're sticking with the Mafia. We're back in New York, and we're following Jacob and Brenna. Now, Jacob has another name, like his Italian name, but for the purposes of this, we're going to keep calling him Jacob because that's his name. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so we meet Jacob when he is called back to New York after seven years of being away for some unknown reason that we have to suss out later. But he's called back to take his rightful place at the head of the Italian law because his father is dying. But he's also called back to marry the granddaughter of the head of the Irish mob so that they can form ties and be a force to reckon with against the Russian mob. Jacob, even though he does not want to get married, he's all for creating a bigger alliance because he has major beef with the Russian mob and we will find that out a little bit later as well. So here we have Brenna and Jacob and they get married. Brenna I love Brenna. I love her character. I love that she was strong, but she still had a little bit of softness, a little bit of naivete, but it wasn't like annoying. You know me and my heroines. It wasn't annoying, but also there was this just superb character development for her, and I loved watching that grow. I loved watching a good character development. So, but Brenna, she is kind of lost in her family. She feels like she's not really seen, like nobody really knows who she is. They kind of forget about her a little bit. She's kind of invincible at times. And what I loved about it was Jacob sees her. Jacob sees the strength that her family doesn't see. He sees that person that is just itching to get out and because he allows her to do that, he gives her the freedom that she wasn't allotted before. That growth is shown so quickly. Her strength is shown. Her just her smarts. It comes out and Jacob sees that. And so I feel like it becomes this. There's, I mean, of course, going to be an attraction there. But it, their relationship starts out where he almost admires her. She admires him to becoming more along the lines of a friendship and then growing. Like you get again get to see this amazing growth with them and and watch them fall in love, which I liked. I liked a lot. So not only do you have mafia and arranged marriage and the story um it really sets it up for, I feel like, the continuation of the series. But the way that Brenna and Jacob's story developed, you really see how with the right person and the right environment, how somebody like Brenna was able to break out of the shell that she was put in and able to become her own person. Smart, capable woman who really just holds her own and really compliments Jacob like they complemented each other really well so I am definitely going to be continuing on because I just I really enjoyed this world the spice let's talk about the spice really quick I really enjoyed that too was there too much of it no was there too little of it no I think it was just right um I think I would give it like a solid three maybe two and a half three I think what just stood out to me most was these amazing characters and the story so but it was good y'all like it all around was good there you go
Okay, so we are going to end on a, like a bomb. All right, so we've got another new to me author that I have been dying to read. I've been saying I was going to read. I finally just, everything clicked into place and I bit the bullet on this one and I'm talking about Jagger Coleal. Like, what did I get myself into? Why didn't anybody warn me? But I read Poisonous Kiss by Jagger Cole. I don't know where this lands in the Interconnected series that it is in. But I read it specifically because of the arranged marriage. Now, at the very, very beginning of this video, I said that there was like one little snag. Here's a snag. It's more of a marriage of convenience than an arranged marriage, but it fits. Okay, so we're going to go with it. Uh, we are still in New York. We are following Gabriel and Fumi. I love that name, by the way. And, okay, let's start, let's start with the spice. <laughs> because, again, why didn't anybody warn me about Jagger Cole? Like, is this what <laughs> I have to look forward to for his plethora of backlist? Y'all, have y'all seen that backlist? It's huge. I think that's why I probably hadn't read him prior, because it is very daunting. It's like, it's big. I feel like we gonna be here for a minute when I start to go down the Jack Cole road. But let's talk about Poisonous Kiss, y'all. Okay, so this was like, this was like watching a train wreck that you just can't pull over and stop. You don't want to. And then you're also looking around like, what am, what am I reading? And what am I watching? Like, what what is happening here? But also, why am I oddly turned on? Should I be turned on for this? Is there something wrong with me for being turned on? What is going on? That those those are just some of the thoughts that I had while um, reading this crazy book. But it was it was good. Like I really enjoyed it. Mr. Jagger Cole, he y'all. So the spice, we got uber spice. It is off the fucking charts. I'm gonna tell you that. So let's just say that Fumi and Gabriel both have hidden their dark desires for certain things in the bedroom for fear of maybe any ramifications that might come of that or even fear of just not it being received well. But they have very similar tastes. So when they come together, some shit happens, okay, um, you got dark dungeon rooms, you've got chasing and stalking, and check your trigger warnings on this one, but you've got clothes being torn off, and games being played, and you just, there's some kinky shit that happens, but like I said, it was something that you can't look away from. Like, you can't. And then you're just like, I probably shouldn't like this, <laughs> but I just can't. I can't. I. So, there you go. Anyway, let's talk about the book a little bit. So, Fumi is desperate to save her father. She has found out some information that she has never known her entire life. And she realizes that her father and her are going to die if she doesn't pay a debt that is a debt from her father. And so she schemes to marry her boss. So Gabriel is her boss. We also have workplace romance here. Now he is a very, very secluded man. She has other bosses that one of them is like one of her really good friends. The other one interacts with her a little bit. But Gabriel is just like this odd very quiet, very stoic, very, you, you just can't get quite a read on Gabriel, but he is going into politics and he is willing to pay somebody to be his wife, to basically be at his beck and call and be the wife that he needs to win the race and eventually maybe further his career in politics. So Fumi is about to get $5 million dollars to do such things, which is what she needs to repay this debt. And so that's where it all begins. So they have to keep up appearances, so she moves in with him, but right away he's very, he just does things that would seem that he's being very caring. He puts her father up in a really nice 
apartment and is just is thoughtful in certain ways but Fumi just can't get a, quite a reading on him like she doesn't know what to think of him but also she thinks she knows this secret of his this dark bedroom secret that he has but so there's just there's a lot going on but it's like super fun there's like fireworks and dynamite and bombs going off when these two get together and it is just explosive but they complement each other so well it's just like with the devil i don't know our main characters they complement each other so well there's this fun give and take it's just it's such a good time and i absolutely love arranged marriage you guys i don't know what my problem is i would never do it in real life but i love mafia i love arranged marriage i love getting to know that stranger and finding those stolen moments i love it so here are five delicious arranged marriage books series interconnect series craziness that i absolutely recommend if you are looking for mafia if you're looking for arranged marriage if you're looking for yummy spice if you're looking for crazy spice if you're looking for a little bit of spice and a little bit of plot if you're I've got everything here that you might need. So that is going to do it for today's video of my trope recommendations. Arranged marriage. I've got to wrap this up because I can see like the sun is setting. Some weird things are happening with the light. So I'm, we're just going to, we're going to wrap this up. But let me know if you've read any of these books, what your thoughts on them were. Do you have an arranged marriage recommendation for me? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, I will leave these books linked down in the description box for you as well. I hope you guys are doing great. I will be back soon with some recent reads. I'm just going to dive into just a bunch of different stuff. So I might not be back with a trope recommendation for a little bit because I'm just, I'm I've, I've reading some really good stuff and I want to tell you guys all about it. So recent reads soon. But I hope everybody is doing great. I will talk to you guys later. But until next time, happy reading. Bye. You draw me in slowly. Brown eyes staring me.